Welcome. Thank you so much for having me. My name is Laurieann Barnett, and I'm the Education Coordinator for the USA National Phonology Network. We're based in the University of Arizona in Tucson, and our funding comes from the U.S. Geological Survey. Today I'm going to provide you with an overview of how to use the Nature's Notebook Citizen and Professional Science Program. We're going to talk a little bit about regional networks that we have across the country who have formed to collect observations on selected plants and animals of interest in the region to understand their phenology. We're going to talk a little bit about how those groups are able to view and download the data that's collected by citizen scientists using Nature's Notebook, and then I'm going to give you some information on how you can get started in a project. The USA National Phenology Network was created in 2007 by a group of scientists who are interested in creating a standardized, long-term data set for use in phenology research. Phenology is the study of recurring life cycle events in plants and animals and their relationship to the environment. And therefore, it's a really great way to study how plants and animals on our planet are responding to potential seasonal and climate change. The goal of the organization was then to not only collect standardized data, but have that data available to others who are interested in using it for research, and secondarily to encourage people of all ages and backgrounds to observe and record phenology so they can participate in a natural world activity. In 2009, the Nature's Notebook Citizen Science Program was created for participants to enter their phenology observations into the National Phenology Database. Standardized protocols were developed for each species in the database as a method of quality control. Observers could then be calibrated by responding to the same definitions for each life cycle event being tracked. Since then, Nature's Notebook has become increasingly popular with backyard observers, land managers, researchers, and agencies who manage or host volunteers. To date, Nature's Notebook has amassed approximately 6,400 active observers at about 7,800 active sites across the United States. These data the observers are collecting results in 6.65 million status records of information from 1,016 different taxa. Included in the data set are data from the historic Lilac Data Project established in the 1950s to better understand the onset of spring in the hopes of increasing crop yields. Today, the lilac data are used to predict the onset of spring across the nation in a project known as the Green Wave, or Spring Indices. In October of 2015, the White House Office of Science and Technology Policy, in partnership with the Federal Community of Practice on Crowdsourcing and Citizen Science, announced the release of the Federal Crowdsourcing and Citizen Science Toolkit. This toolkit was designed to help federal agencies to innovate, collaborate, and discover, and recommends that agencies consider using data collected by citizen scientists to increase their reach. It contains information on how to design and maintain citizen science projects, as well as example case studies and resources related to communities that practice crowdsourcing and citizen science. Nature's Notebook was selected as one of five case studies for collecting and utilizing this type of citizen science data. The hope is that the toolkit will elevate the status of citizen science projects and demonstrate that data collected by a wide variety of observers are quite valuable to many types of research projects. Observations collected in Nature's Notebook are an organized way to store information that has been gathered about nature for hundreds of years. These observations become part of a permanent record and are designed to be easy to understand, yet rigorous in their ability to paint an accurate picture of the species interactions occurring at an ecosystem level. With some training and calibration, participants can commit to joining us for the long term and through time hone their observation skills. Here you see an example of one phenophase, or life cycle event, of the species protocols developed for a semi-deciduous desert species, the velvet mesquite. Each species of the 1016 in the database has a suite of 8 to 10 phenophase definitions for each of the phases it exhibits through time. Observers go into the field armed with specific information about the plants and animals they are observing in addition to these phenophase definitions and submit yes or no answers about whether or not they see the phases occurring at the time of their visitation. 
Before beginning, observers must be familiar with the plant and be able to identify it and tag the individual at a site in the database. They also must be familiar with the botany of the plant, including the leaves, flowers, and fruits, to ensure there is no misidentification of the species and its phases. On the data sheets, observers find a space to record details about their plant, the time of observation, and a list of phenophases to record. They are able to circle yes or no in response to the phenophase definition, or they are provided with a place to record uncertainty. The National Coordinating Office for the USA NPN recommends that recording uncertainty until further research and identification by the observer is conducted to correctly identify the phenophase. Once the data are collected, they can then be entered into the database, and if uncertainty was recorded at the time of observation, edits can be made in the future when one becomes more certain of what one has seen. Let's take a closer look at a few more examples of plant and animal phenophases available for observation. In this example, the northern red oak, you can see three clear categories of phenophases, the leaves, the flowers, and the fruits. Each of these broad categories has three to five more detailed definitions to which an observer might record yes or no. When beginning, we recommend observers start with those with which they are most comfortable, such as leaves or colored leaves, open flowers, and ripe fruits. As observers become more comfortable with the individual and its species, they can then begin to re respond with more details and answer the additional questions provided. Similarly, as in this example of the Northern Red Cardinal, the database provides definitions not only for presence and absence, but for activity, reproduction and development, and method, such as whether or not the bird was spotted at a bird feeder. Again, the observer may answer only that with which they are comfortable to ensure the most accurate observations possible. The paper data sheets from the database look identical to what you've seen on the last few slides. There's an option to print them out by species or by day, which would list in order the plants and animals selected for observation at your site. To save time and a second step, Nature's Notebook has mobile apps for Android and iPhone devices. When using a mobile app, the data entry happens right in the field, so there is no need to return to the computer to enter your data. The apps will work with limited or no phone service as well. If there's no cellular service, the data recorded is stored on the phone and then uploaded upon returning to a service area or Wi-Fi. Once your data are entered, either via mobile app or computer, you are able to explore phenology observations using our visualization or data download tool. The visualization tool provides an overview of sites at which you are observing, allows visualization of observations entered there, and is a method for creating phenology calendars. It quickly allows you to see which species and locations are data rich, find patterns like the relationship between spring temperature and the timing of flowering, and answer questions such as did my poppies flower earlier this year or later compared to last year. The data download tool serves customized data sets from the National Phenology Database using the filters to specify dates, regions, species, and phenophases of interest. Raw data, or data representing the status of one phenophase for one individual plant or animal at a given site at a specific date and time, or summarized data representing an estimate of phenophase onset, duration, and end can be obtained via download. On the website www.usanpn.org forward slash data, you will find links to both the visualization tool and the data download tool, as well as helpful videos on how to use each. Here is an example of a phenology calendar created using the visualization tool. You see a comparison between observations collected in 2014 versus 2015 for four species of birds visiting the Valle de Oro National Wildlife Refuge in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Managers at the refuge are interested in understanding the phenology of animals visiting the refuge because they are in the process of converting the newly acquired property from agricultural land to the native bosque. Having information about species present will allow them to not only better understand animal visitors, but also allow them to track changes to the wildlife and their patterns as the land returns to native habitat. Once you have a clear sense of how to use Nature's Notebook at your site and an idea of species you'd like to monitor with potential research questions, 
consider engaging volunteers to help with the task of collecting year-round observations. Many people already have a strong interest in phenology or seasonal change. Groups of people, whether they are students, citizens with minimal background in the hard sciences, or retired professionals, faculty, or agency members, are interested in nature and how the world changes around them. Phenology observation is a terrific way to help them keep a record of what they are seeing through time, practically use what they are seeing for observing and for gardening, and also help them share their observations for science and decision making. It is also a terrific way to engage youth in the world around them. Young children are often better at making observations and noticing things in nature than adults. The exercise of recording phenology observations in nature's notebook or elsewhere becomes even more meaningful when it can be applied to a practical purpose, a broader topic of interest, or a research question developed by the observer or a personally known scientist. For example, observers who are inherently curious about seasonal changes in their region, such as in the mid-Atlantic, might be more likely to record what they are seeing each season through time. They also may be interested in whether or not trees and other plants are leafing out or changing color earlier or later this year than in previous years, especially if they have anecdotal information to support that theory. In essence, they may be inspired to create their own hypothesis or scientific investigation and create a record of easily accessible data to determine whether or not their perceived suspicions are correct. They may be even more inspired to collect observations if they already belong to a volunteer natural resource organization, which makes a local recommendation to gather this information in support of a broader data collection process. This is especially true if they have an affinity for the organization, if it is personally gratifying to volunteer with the organization, and the leaders of the organization are well respected within the community. Other examples of personal interest in having a record of meaningful phenology observations include backyard gardeners, docents for botanical gardens, or master gardener volunteers who seek to better understand the timing of leaf out, bloom, and harvest times in the plots that they tend for tours they may lead. Outdoor enthusiasts such as fishermen and hunters whose activities depend upon seasonal breeding times and migration times throughout the year are interested in knowing when those things occur and if there are changes from year to year. Bird watchers are interested in seasonal changes as they wait for the return of their favorite migratory species. And property owners, especially those living near managed lands, are interested in the seasonality of the forest, where an understanding of seasonal phenology of underbrush can make the difference between safe and hazardous conditions. Record keeping can be simple or complex, depending upon the commitment of the observer. Many historical figures famously captured meticulous information about nature during their time. Founding Father Thomas Jefferson, the third president of the United States, is known for his outstanding journal entries about his homestead, Monticello, in central Virginia. Today, his journals are valuable to reference, as contemporary caretakers at Monticello were able to recreate his garden based upon his careful notes. His journal includes species lists, planting dates, bloom time and harvest time, and weather data. From that, we were able to see differences in the timing of many of these, indicating the garden is either being influenced by the urban heat island effect from the city of Charlottesville, or, more broadly, climate change. Several other contemporary examples of meticulous phenological records exist. The historic lilac network and data set was begun in the 1950s by researcher Joe Caprio at the University of Montana. Caprio sought to collect first leaf and first bloom observations on clone lilacs across the United States within the boundaries of their range. Clone plants were used because one can know with confidence that differences in the timing of flowering and leafing between different individuals is due to the differences in local environmental conditions rather than due to a genetic variation between the individuals. The goal of the clone lilac program was to estimate the onset of spring in order to better understand the growing season for corn and thus increase crop yields. His project was one of the first citizen science projects because he mailed clone plants to experimental ranges and citizens across the United States, requesting that each year they record leaf and bloom data and return the information to him. He hand copied the information into a record that has since been added to the USA National Phenology Network's National Phenology Database. 
Today, these data are used in spring casting and green wave projects to produce near real-time predictions of when spring may begin in the U.S. Another example of meticulous and valuable record keeping I'd like to share is from a naturalist here in Tucson. David Bertelson has been hiking the Finger Rock Trail in the Santa Catalina Mountains for over 30 years. On each weekly 10-mile round trip, he recorded phenology information for almost 600 flowering plant taxa and has amassed over 73,000 vertebrate records. These data were used by Bertelson, with other local scientists, to study range shifts occurring in plants and animals on the mountain, related again to factors such as the urban heat island effect from Tucson or climate change. Not everyone is, or can be, so dedicated to careful record keeping, but any records of seasonal changes in plants and animals can be very valuable. You never know who might be interested in learning more about what you've seen years from now. Keeping records can also take many formats. With technology readily available today on smartphones, recording seasonal changes and variation can be as easy as snapping a photo with your iPhone, as is shown here in a time series of the same red maple in an observer's backyard or by using a Nature's Notebook mobile app in the field to record phenophase observations. If you are responsible for either managing volunteers or creating a citizen science phenology monitoring program, think about how you might engage people in this task. Having a well thought out research or land management question that you can share with your community, or plugging into existing groups of volunteers who have come together for a cause that can support your research and management question can be most successful. Broadly, you will find many people, but not all, concerned about things such as climate change, local effects of climate change on plants and animals, invasive species, and much more. Providing a framework for citizens to see how their observations can inform research and mitigation is critical to get started. Ultimately, your goal should be to find a way to engage people for the long term. Using tactics such as meaningful participation and causes of interest can increase the sustainability of your volunteer core. Successful phenology monitoring programs have a plan for regularly engaging with their volunteers via workshops, newsletters, and special programs, and providing the volunteers with information about what their data are demonstrating. A balance of opportunities need to be available so participants do not get burnt out. The Nature's Notebook website has information and resources available to help with program planning and walks you through step-by-step -step how to get started in the field. The longer the observation data are being collected, the more valuable the program for local and national partners. Create an account in Nature's Notebook and visit our website for more information on how to get started and use the interface for data entry and data analysis. Establish a research or monitoring question, even a simple one, to jumpstart your data collection. Set up a group or a shared site where volunteers can submit observations on the plants and animals you've selected for monitoring. Strive to form a regional network with like-minded organizations and agencies. There are over 20 regional phenology networks participating across the country, each coming together around a purpose, idea, or a cause. Several examples of networks that have formed include the California Phenology Project, funded by a National Science Foundation grant to better understand the phenology of select plant species across elevational and latitudinal gradients in several of the national park units in California. The Minnesota Phenology Project, formed to better understand the phenology of species of historical interest in the state. Recently, because of the increasing popularity of the network, citizens have come forward to share rich data sets deeply embedded in the natural history of the area. The Tucson Phenology Trail, formed as a collaborative project for like-minded educational partners in the Tucson region to share an experience with the natural world and each other. Citizens and school children monitor select plants in backyards, schoolyards, and at field trip locations, providing visitors the opportunity to have similar experiences in different locations. And the Appalachian Trail Seasons, or AT Seasons project, a collaborative project bringing parks and organizations together to monitor seasonal changes along the entire Appalachian Trail. AT Seasons builds the foundation to understanding and protecting the scenic and natural beauty of the trail corridor. In summary, if you are interested in starting a phenology monitoring program using Nature's Notebook, a citizen science project sponsored by the U.S. Geological Survey, 
Think about ways you can engage citizens and volunteers in your community in meaningful, long-term scientific research. Develop a plan for your site and think about other organizations nearby with whom you can collaborate. Overlap a science or management purpose with education and outreach and develop a theme that participants can understand and support. Including these elements will establish programmatic stability. We wish you much success in achieving your monitoring and educational goals. If you have any further questions, feel free to contact us. I can be reached using the contact information on your screen. Happy phenology monitoring and long-term data set building.